Hello everyone, this video is on the topic of teaching your dog to put on their harness when you hold it out. So it's for harnesses where the dog puts their head through. You could also potentially teach your dog to put their feet up on a platform if you had a dog that uh, gets into their harness by putting their feet into it. So this video specifically is made uh, to help people with service dogs Sometimes dogs will start to have an aversion to having their harness put on because sometimes it bumps into their ears or it just feels oppressive when the harness goes on. So instead of putting the harness onto the dog, you can teach the dog to put on their harness on a verbal cue or a visual cue. If your dog has an extreme aversion to putting on his harness, you can try using something else that looks nothing like a harness to teach the cue of putting their head through the harness and something very easy and with a larger hole so that their ears aren't getting squished or it's not rubbing against them. Then this is a pool noodle. You can gradually make it smaller and smaller so I could cut the pool noodle into smaller pieces so that it's a smaller hole that the dog has to put their head through and get used to bumping into the bottom part with their chest on a verbal cue. So um, you can use whatever cue you want. I'm going to say put on your vest and that's going to mean put your head through whatever I'm holding out like this. So it could be put on your harness um, because I also have a harness but for Bliss who is my service dog I'm going to have put on your vest mean for the vest and then for the normal harness I'm just going to put it on him so that it's really a specific cue that the service dog work is going to begin and that it's not just a casual walk where he's just walking on a loose leash enjoying uh, being a dog. Okay so what I'm going to do is throw, ooh I dropped a treat, I'm going to throw a treat and say get it behind and then I'm just going to feed him like this so he's getting used to approaching the harness and getting a treat. It's not a harness, a uh, pool noodle. So I throw a treat and I'm just building uh, a repetitive chain of behaviors where he's getting a reinforcement away and he's seeing the harness and he's getting a reinforcement for approaching it. So there's no markers um, that I'm using just yet. I'm just building uh, a repetitive behavior of going away and coming back with confidence. So I'm not moving into his space. Um, that's really important. If anything, I'm going to move away from him. So if the dog is reluctant to come towards you when you're holding a treat, as, you, as he approaches, you can move away and make noise. Did you see how he got faster? So when you're ever conditioning something, you can begin with movement away before movement towards. And that's one of the big reasons that dogs don't like having harnesses put on, because immediately the trainer is putting the object into their space and hovering over the dog's head. So even though he's pretty good, you can see he's kind of backing up. I mean, he's, he's a wonderful guy. But you always want to begin with either being still or moving away. Good. And, and if you start to get to the next step where you're getting the dog's head through and they start to get a little bit worried, go back to the first step and really build. In multiple training sessions, you throw the treat away and you can even start adding the cue um, of come or put it in or touch or whatever you want. So touching your fingers, touch, good. And then throwing a treat away uh, to really build that uh, initial joy of seeing this and wanting to approach it. Okay, so if your dog is really confident and successful with that step, you can move on to holding the treat where the dog puts their head through the harness. So they're going to put the head through the harness and eat the treat. And the goal is for the dog to not dip their head back out of the harness. So I'm going to load up my right hand with a couple of treats and then I'm going to throw one away for him. And this is great because when I throw it away, I can see how fast he approaches. If he stops wanting to approach, that can mean that the, the reinforcement isn't of high enough value that he's getting conditioned to enjoy the harness. So if you throw one away and they go sniffing and want to wander off, you need to try again at a different time or try better treats or just break, break the steps up smaller. So I'm feeding him like this and then I'm going to say free and get him to back up or whatever cue you want. For him to for your dog to get out of the harness um, and then you throw the treat away so i could say free or i could say undress or whatever you want so i'm going to say um, put on your harness and hold the treat here and then mark and reinforce multiple times now i can start marking and then when i'm when he's done and i want him to get out i'm going to give a cue so he doesn't just back out on his own 
So I'm going to say undress, and then I'm going to lure his head out of the harness, and then throw a treat and say get it. So I didn't mark. Usually I use a clicker as I talk and mark the exact moments, but I don't want to click near his head. If you are going to use a clicker where you're holding it, um, say for example, I'm going to hold the clicker and this in my hand, I can, I can click and feed like this. Good job. And then have him push his head back out. But I've got a huge glob of poster tack on my clicker so that it muffles it so I can put it like right near my ear and it's not loud at all. Put on your harness. Good boy. Did you see the millisecond he kind of looked around the corner of the harness? So if the dog goes around and goes to your hand, just remove your hand and then walk away like this and then represent the harness with the treat so the dog knows that if he goes around, it's not just that you're going to feed him. Uh, you don't need to tell your dog he's wrong. You just have to show him what he does need to do in order to get the reinforcement. If you've used luring to train this behavior, you can then pretend to hold a treat, say put on your harness, yes, and as the dog puts his head through, show him that you have no treat in your hand and then go and get a treat. So there he backed up to get the treat off the floor. I'm going to put the treats away. I'm going to say, put on your harness. Good. And then I'm going to go get the treat from a direction that is facing forward. So if it's the treat back here, you can see that's going to make him back out. So I have the treats here. Put on your harness. Good. And he didn't go in all the way. Uh, I want him to go in more forcefully so it touches his chest like that. So I'm going to say, good, and then feed him so that he leans into the harness like that. Good job. And he's backing out before I give the cue. So what that tells me is I need to not just do one treat where he's then predicting he's going to do the behavior again, but do multiple treats and then give him a release cue. Get undressed or whatever. <laughs> for me, it's going to be free, but I thought get undressed sounds funny uh, for a service dog. The final step is getting rid of the lure completely. Either your dog can offer putting their head in like that and you can mark and reinforce multiple times before then releasing your dog free. Or say your cue if you think your dog's going to do it. Put on your harness, but they might not do it in the exact way that you want. So see how he kind of, I haven't worked on this with him, but he hasn't put his head through as, as forcefully or as far enough into the hoop that I wanted him to. So what I can do is because the criteria is higher and the lure isn't there, I'm going to mark and reinforce a lower level of behavior that I want. So I say put on your harness, yes, and then I'm going to feed him for having his head further in. So I'm marking him offering and feeding in the position that I want him to be and then see if I can build it. Now if he doesn't think to put his head in further and further, I can get some offering, put, your, put on your harness, good, and then I can go back to the game of just having him touch my hand. Ready? Put on your harness. Good. And build that desire and push into the harness using the hand target or the lure and then working in amongst the trials of doing that on getting him to offer it. So um, if you check out my Instagram, you might see him doing a stronger head push into this hula hoop after we've practiced it a little bit. But this was his first lesson doing this. So just so you know. For optimal conditioning, I suggest working on the exercise at least 12 times for a minute every day before trying it with the real harness and expecting the dog to find the cue, put on your harness, reinforcing, and the dog to be able to generalize it to the new, to the old harness. Now, if you need to put your dog in a harness in between the training sessions, you can do something like Go in the car with your dog without the harness on, and just before they're about to get out of the door, you can slip the harness over their head, feed a treat, and jump out the door. So the dog isn't um, in your living room with nothing going on, and the one thing that's going onto their body is a harness. I like to describe it as um, if you're wearing uncomfortable clothes and you go to a party, and there's lots of stuff going on, you're less likely to be um, conscious of that maybe your shoes are too tight or your, your belt is too tight or you're wearing a shirt that's itchy where if you were in your living room and you put on some uh, tight fitting shoes, you're going to be very hyper aware of it. So if the only thing in the environment is the harness touching their body and they don't like it, it's going to be less um, 
it, they're going to have the attention drawn to it. So in between the conditioning of getting the dog to enjoy putting it on, you put it on in an environment where the dog is interested and motivated to do something and then the harness goes on and then they get to go on a sniffy walk or, or they get into a training session with treats outside. Are you ready? He said, nope, I'm listening to you talk. So I'm going to practice with this harness now. So I'm going to go back to the original step of throwing a treat and then feeding him like this. Good job. And then I'm also going to practice walking away from him, get it, get it, get it, and getting him motivated to move fast towards it. Get it, get it, get it. Good. And as you can see, he's not that big of a fan of having his harness put on. So that's why I want to train him this because it's easy when he's sitting in my car and I just slip it over his head because he's focused on getting out, but I've not worked on it inside the house like this. And you can see, Blissy, come here. If I go to put it on his head, I can do it, but he's also backing up. So instead of just continuously doing that, I'm going to work on the cue of him confidently putting his head through there. Get it. Good. 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 Whoop. Put it on. Good. Free. Can you do paw? Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like this video, leave me a comment as it's highly reinforcing, and subscribe to my channel for more free dog training videos on how to train your dog without the use of physical or psychological intimidation. See you later.